Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mysteries and Oddities video. Alright, one last video here for this go around, then I'll give this series a rest. I picked this one actually from another list, another list of, in this case, of the top 15 most mysterious items found throughout the world. I was actually going to do a video related to the Blue Well game. Somebody has suggested that as well. But when I was looking at the information, it just seems so morbid. Even though there is new info in terms of the cat capture of the person that allegedly created this online phenomenon. Again, looking at the info and looking at the pictures related to it, I don't think it's something that I would want to talk about and share with everyone here. The info is out there if you wanted to truly see it, but at the same time, it's just so uh, dark, so morbid. I just thought I would focus on this pick instead. So this one has to do with an entry, something involving a formation that's found in Siberia. And if you go there to this day, it looks very distinct. It's it's uh, something like a crater of some kind that has mystified people ever since its discovery, especially with regards to how it was formed, considering its very unique uh, characteristics. It's pretty much unlike anything else out there on this earth. And there's many theories about how it came to be, including, if you could believe it, more on the pair, on the uh, UFO side. So I'm going to highlight that within a few minutes. So it has to do with this. You're looking at it now. Instantly, it looks unlike anything you've seen before, right? It's called the Potomsky Crater, or also known as the Potom Crater. So let's go ahead. Let's talk about all the information associated with this unique rock formation. So what is this Potomsky Crater? Well, it's a crater or some kind of rock formation that's found. You have to go again to Siberia, in this case, southeastern Siberia. And if you head out a little over 300, I'm sorry, 200 miles from a place called Bodaibi, then you head to an area called the Irkuts region, that's where you'll find this thing here. It's pretty much on its own. It's isolated. It's unlike anything else. It, you'd have to go way out when it comes to finding this thing um, because once you get to that region, um, it's not like it's just going to suddenly pop up there. No, when I was reading the info, people that were out there to try to find, like they set up the expeditions to try to find this crater and then see it in person, they have to truly go out of their way for it. They have to fly by helicopter to a certain region and then they have to walk a uh, hike essentially for a long time just to get to it um, it takes a lot of money um, and a lot of time and patience to get to this place so that's how isolated this thing is but yes let's talk about the, at least what it is like the characteristics associated with it it's a gigantic rock formation it's a large mound completely made up of what looks like limestone blocks of course what's most distinct about it is a its size is supposed to be something like 25 Five stories in total size. Now, I don't think it's like 25 stories high, nothing like that, but 25 stories in total length. It's huge. Like, the pictures don't really show justice when it comes to how big this thing is. Its diameter is about 160 meters. Its height at the highest point is about 40 meters tall. That's over 130 feet. And then on the inside of it, the smaller mound that's most notable um, within the crater itself, it has a height of about 39 feet total it seems to be about uh, a, a weight of a 1 million tons again because it's all made of these gigantic limestone blocks that that just just completely engulf the area surrounding it other than that though there's just those trees that seem to have been developed or were enveloped by this crater and then slowly but surely have started growing around it but that's pretty much it. That's all the characteristics tied to this crater. As far as its legend and its lore associated with that region, um, it does have some notoriety. In fact, there's a, uh, a set of, I guess, Aborigines or something, a uh, group of people there that have lived there for a long time. Um, in fact, they're called the Yakut people, if I'm not mistaken. They have associated this place as being an evil place. Number one, of course, because it's so deep within the woods. You have to truly go out of your way to get there. But when you do so, then they tell you exactly that it should be a place that's totally avoided. Like, they even have a name for it. They call it, as it translates to, the Fire Eagle Nest. And the reason why they avoid it is because 
there's claims that people disappear within that region people that go searching for this crater also um, whenever they disappear that's it like they completely go without a trace even so much so that animals they are smart enough according to the you know, those Yakut people to avoid this crater they just overall sense it as having just it's a bad place to be kind of like the tantamount to like turning a corner and seeing a really bad alley that's probably the closest thing that that you have here even people that go near like not nearby this crater but closer to its proximity they start to say that people start feeling unwell like there's this sense of dread like there's a sense of, of sickness associated with this crater that's why they tell everyone that they can you know don't go near it otherwise you'll experience some bad things and I'll highlight a uh, expedition that apparently may have claimed a person for trying to do so now the person who actually discovered this crater is this guy you're looking at him now he was a scientist a geologist actually his name was Vadim Kolb Bakov, if I'm saying that name correctly, he discovered it back in 1949. So this crater, I guess, is it's not too old in terms of its discovery. Sometimes like past other craters, people have found them in like in the 1800s and beforehand. No, in this case, it's within uh, the last century. And he was the one that came across it. He gave some pretty good... Um, tantamount I guess the descriptions like uh, quotes as well whenever he discovered this thing like he was somebody that was uh, shocked at its origin like when he saw it on here it totally just blew his mind away when it came to the size of this thing because there it was imagine coming across just endless almost I guess a fields a forest and then you see this thing here standing out almost like monolithic like straight something out of like 2001 except for a different different rock formation of some kind but yes he's the one that discovered it and he's the one that was able to um to try to have um, um some studies uh, tied to it as well but as far as what created this crater still to this day there's no clear explanation nobody has been able to give a concise answer for it. the closest have been uh, repeated expeditions to try to determine more i guess uh, uh scientific values like they were able to find out the Siberian scientists that have come across it they've calculated based on the age of the trees and then the way that they've been enveloped by the crater and vice versa they've been able to determine that this thing has actually just been created about 250 years ago relatively new this um, in the in the world of craters and in the world of these type of rock formations I mean there's like that gigantic crater here in uh, the US closer to the uh, Arizona I think area that one there I mean that was created a long 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 time ago I mean thousands 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 of years ago uh, but in this case this one relatively new 250 years so much so that it seems like there's the idea that this thing is tied to a uh, very other famous uh, uh, meteorite I think it's the Tunguski meteorite if I'm if I'm not mistaken and people surmise that it could be linked the one and the other in terms of their after effect like was the uh, the meteorite the one that still remains a mystery in terms of how it flew over Russia was it something as well like was it a piece of it landing here in this area and if so, was there anything else um, uh, uh, remaining of it? Because the, the Tunguska meteorite, the Tunguska event, there's been no real trace of its existence other than the after effects, like those clear pictures involving those trees being swept over. But could this have been, in this case, something from it, something that landed to it? There's that theory. There's another theory as well that it could just be a volcano. It's, it could be something that's releasing itself slowly but surely from underneath the ground. The problem with that one though is um, uh, clearly there would be something hot I guess associated with it there would be lava there would be something else coming out from the ground that wouldn't just stop I guess it, it would it would continue slowly but surely but in this case um, that, that that doesn't also seem to fly then I was mentioning earlier the idea of UFOs because get this the people that have studied or in this case the way that this crater looks the impact of it they have surmised that in order in order for that to have occurred there should be two objects not one but two that hit that place at the same time object a would have slammed into the ground and presumably it would have been something cylindrical something very dense much much denser than let's say your average meteorite it would have slammed the ground closely followed like let's say milliseconds by object B 
smaller but still right behind it so the two of them would have hit one hitting first releasing certain earth in this case certain rocks from the earth and then the other one hitting underneath it right after it uh, creating that mini mound I guess within the actual crater itself and then that's why they're surmising could it be something involving a buried UFO or set of UFOs like uh, like uh, if you were to take the entire rocks away all million tons of it you would find evidence of whatever it was that hit and slammed that ground itself it would be interesting like uh, to see and truly test out that theory and the reason why people also surmise that it's a ufo and not a meteorite is because there seems to be this radioactive feeling again mention remember i was mentioning earlier that people that come across this feel uneasy like they feel sick afterwards well the trees themselves have some accelerated growth those that are around the crater like there's a period a set of rings within the trees that suddenly showcase a huge acceleration of growth and they're tying it to a form of radioactivity that was within the crater and uh, volcanoes i don't think have that type of radioactivity nor do i think meteorites do so that's why people surmise that it could be something UFO related that slammed into that ground and then slowly the rest of the environment around it was impacted and that's how it looks very distinctly like it does. But all of these are just theories. Those are all um, um, avenues that people are pursuing. Nobody yet has been able to truly tie anything in terms of what it is, like what it truly uh, was, what occurred to it. Um, so uh, to this very day, even after its discovery over 50 plus years ago, nobody has been able to tr to still state this is what it is. Although who knows, maybe in the future, you might have uh, a discovery that could finally be the smoking gun. Somebody that will truly, somebody or some group that will f truly find the answer for it. By the way, I was mentioning earlier that this crater may have actually claimed a life. So back in 2005, there was yet another expedition into the crater to try to find out what it was. It was an expedition that was led by... Um, uh, I think it was a scientist, um, I'm trying to remember his name, but I don't have it right now, my apologies. But yes, it was a scientist who was so eager to try to find out and see exactly what occurred with this crater. However, it was almost like uh, tragic, like almost poetic tragedy, because when this scientist, after this entire expedition, like I was mentioning earlier, it takes time, it takes money, uh, lots of effort to essentially go towards it. Well, once they got there, and this scientist was actually just less than in this case, uh, I think it was three miles, three miles from the location itself, that's when um, the, the, that he suffered a heart attack. He had like something bad happen to him. Everyone was rushing towards him, you know, trying to find out what occurred, you know, uh, what had happened but unfortunately he had a heart attack he was not able to be resuscitated and then that was it um, he was he was dead thereafter the locals though again the ones that had warned everyone again as far as the um, the um, the the circumstances about that area, the eeriness, the, the the do not go there type mentality, they knew though that this was the crater yet again uh, taking uh, another life uh, because of the um, tales all around. Them. I was mentioning earlier about people disappearing, not being found later on. Uh, Eugenie Vorobiev, that was his name. My apologies. He was the one, the scientist that was trying to get there um, uh, for the expedition in 2005. He's the one that was uh, that had that heart attack but yes the locals there knew better like the, in their minds they saw that it was just another circumstance of this crater claiming a life because of people foolishly going across it but that's it that's all the information uh, tied to this Potomsky crater if anyone has anything else important something that I might have missed please post those comments below that'd be great to hear anybody having a uh, chance to go there that'd be really cool if someone has experience and has actually visited it uh, it'd be great to hear what your comments are you've seen the pictures that people still visit it to this day it's not like it's something that's um impossible to not go to it's just pretty hard to go to but uh, to this day again it still remains a big mystery as to how it was created and then also what could be buried underneath it so all right everybody thanks again as always take care